In the past few years of iPhone design, I'd rank the top three in the following order. The original iPhone, the iPhone 6, and to top it all off, the iPhone 4. The iPhone 3G and the iPhone 5 never really hit it with me. So now we have this, the refurbished iPhone 5 body that contains most of the components found in the new iPhone 6S. It's called the iPhone SE, standing for Special Edition. Special? I don't think so. Just a way to get rid of old shells and some old hardware while making a crap ton of money. Though should you even consider the iPhone SE as a viable option in this ever expanding and ever growing in size phone market? I'm not quite sure as of right now, but let's explore that a little bit more in this full review. First off, let's talk about the design, or the lack thereof. Its size is exactly identical to the iPhone 5 and 5S, nearly the same weight as well. The only way you can tell an iPhone SE apart from the 5 and 5S is the SE badge on the back or if you bought the phone in rose gold color, just like the one you're seeing in this video. The screen is the same size, 4 inches, and has 1136 by 640 in terms of resolution. It retains the same pixels per inch as the iPhone 6 of 326 PPI and all other Reddit displays, other than the 5.5 inch display on the Plus devices, which come with 401 PPI. Internally, the iPhone SE is powered by the same A9 processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and it comes in two size configurations of 16 and 64 gigabytes. In the hand, it's fairly hilarious. More so if you have been a Plus owner or have owned any modern Android device. It's so tiny that I just can't type very well on the panel. I've been spoiled by having a larger area to type on. Though if a small size doesn't bother you, the SE has some other things in store to make it a somewhat Apple flagship. For example, it carries the same 12 megapixel 4K capable camera on the back and a true tone flash. Though the similarity stopped there. The iPhone SE lacks 3D touch a huge feature on the new iPhone S6 and S6 Plus. It also comes with Touch ID 1.0 and not 2.0, a minor difference but definitely noticeable if you've been using the iPhone 6S. Also, the front-facing camera is a 1.2 megapixel camera and not the 5 megapixel camera on the S6 and Plus. So while they do claim it's an iPhone 6S in a smaller body, it's not 100% true. However, if you really do like the small form factor, then you'll be happy to know that the iPhone SE performs just as well as the iPhone 6S. With iOS 9.3, it's a pretty snappy device throughout the entire interface. Running some more intensive applications will run just like the iPhone 6S, but sometimes even a little better due to the lower resolution. So if you've used an iPhone 6S, the experience is absolutely identical, but if you're upgrading from an iPhone 5 or 5S, you're going to be blown away by the performance. Now, if you are a current iPhone 6S or 6S Plus owner, you do notice the lack of 3D touch, but why would you be buying an iPhone SE if you had an iPhone 6S or 6S Plus? But apart from that, the experience of the SE is identical to the 6S, just smaller. Now I must admit, having a phone that can be completely accessed with one hand and really one thumb is pretty damn cool. And I think the number one reason for anyone to go out and buy the SE is because they'll want to use the phone one-handed or buy this in mass quantity for their company or something. But for the everyday consumer, you'll definitely want to go with the 64 gigabyte model, which is still $500. And for that price, there are far better and Android options with larger displays. If you care about the camera at all, then well, you'll be pleased. The iPhone SE takes the same quality photos that you'll get off an iPhone 6S. It has the same 12 megapixel unit with larger pixels, the same f2.2 aperture, and the same lens. The only thing that doesn't carry over from an S6 Plus is the OIS, but when compared to the S6, it's exactly identical. Battery life was a major hassle on the iPhone 5 and 5S, and I fear the same care is over. The A9 is definitely a less power hungry processor, but don't expect battery life anywhere near the 6S Plus range. I've been getting around three and a half hours of screen on time, pretty similar to the iPhone 6S. Now, if you are completely sold on the idea of a four inch iPhone, the SE is the only choice, though I still don't really like the idea. In my complete and honest opinion, the SE is a ridiculous proposition, and the non-existent hype around the launch sort of confirmed that for the most part. I don't think the SE was the right product to announce. If they wanted a smaller iPhone, then I believe they should have properly engineered one, not just think of ways to make people spend money on old things. But what do I know? Apple is still going to sell this phone to you, and you're probably going to buy it. 
So those are my thoughts about the SE. I'll call it the unwelcomed past. Thanks for watching. I do hope you enjoyed my review. If so, hit that thumbs up button you see below and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, my name is Marco Hanna and I'll catch you in my next video.